Hello everyone, my name is Alex and today I will be exploring the topic of animals in children's literature. So the first story I want to look at is The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses. This was written and illustrated by Paul Goebel uh, and published by Bradbury Press, Simon and Schuster in 1978. Uh, the book is 32 pages long and is meant for the age range of kindergartners to second graders. Um, this is a Caldecott Medal award winner. Um, it won the medal in 1979. And the genre would be uh, fiction slash fairy tale, as the novel features talking horses that are capable of deep thought. Uh, the story also implies at the end that the main character transforms into a horse. So The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses showcases a Native American tribe and the importance of horses in their daily lives. The story focuses on a young girl who has a special connection to these horses. She spends all of her free time caring for the horses and one day takes the horses out to eat grass. She falls asleep with the horses while they're eating and fails to see the approaching thunderstorm on the horizon. The storm arrives and spooks all the horses and the girl is unable to calm the horses down. So she clings to one of them as the herd flees in terror. Realizing she's lost, she falls asleep and decides to reassess the situation in the morning but she's awoken by a beautiful spotted stallion who reveals himself as the leader of all wild horses. The stallion invites the girl and the horses to live with them, and they do for a whole year, until the villagers find the girl and bring her home. But they realize that she's unhappy at the village, so the girl's parents let her uh, return to live among the horses. She returns every year to her village people and provides a young colt to the people until she suddenly one day uh, just disappears forever. The tribes people claim that the girl is transformed into a horse and everyone lives happily ever after. So the story hones in on the relationship between animals and humans. The tribes people have trained their horses to hunt buffalo and in return the tribes people take great care of the horses. The young girl also harbors a special uh, relationship with the horses and goes to great lengths when tending to their needs. In return, the horses protect the girl, revealing the bond between animals and humans. The girl who loved wild horses could be connected to the language arts discipline, as this is a fictional fairy tale and contains many words that can bolster a child's vocabulary. The story does contain multicultural aspects, as the novel revolves around a Native American tribe and the integral role of animals in their society. The story also delves into the Native American folklore at the end, uh, as the people describe the horse, the horse people, and their relationship to the Native Americans. The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses was written and published in 1979, which was a time when uh, there were many animal rights movements happening, like 1979's establishment of the Animal Legal Defense Fund. The novel also won the Caldecott Award of 1979, and I think uh, is because of Goebbels' effort to create a novel with an important message while producing colorful, vibrant illustrations himself. Goebbels' story is one that urges readers to reflect on the beauty and importance of animals in everyday life. The next story I want to look at is Please Please the Bees by Gerald Kelly. Uh, it was written and illustrated by Kelly, published um, by Albert Whitman and Company in 2017. The novel is 32 pages long, and is meant for the age range of first graders to third graders. Uh, this war, this book did not win any uh, Caldecott medals, but it did win quite a few, most notably the 2017 Francis and Wesley Bach Book Award for Children's Literature. Uh, this story would fall under the fiction genre, as the novel features talking bees, talking bears, and both animals exhibit human behavior. So Please Please the Bees begins with an explanation of the main character's daily routine. The protagonist is Benedict the Bear, and his everyday life revolves around the consumption of honey. The bear has three full jars of honey delivered to his doorstep every morning by the local bees, and all is right in the world until the honey jar delivery suddenly comes to a stop. The bees go on strike because they are being overworked and are struggling to produce enough honey for the bear. Benedict realizes that it's rude for him to disregard the needs of the bees, so he finds ways to accommodate the bees and help them harvest honey. The bees happily return and Benedict learns to be more considerate of their needs. So 
The story focuses on the importance of bees in the global ecosystem and the problem with over-harvesting honey. Benedict the bear lived a comfortable life until he realized that the bees were struggling to produce enough honey for his needs and their own. The author uses Benedict as an example for people to follow after. So bees are important for the ecosystem, so people must do their part to provide for the bees' needs so that they may continue to survive and produce honey for everyone. Please Please the Bees could be connected to the science discipline as it focuses on the relationship between animals, the needs of animals, and the ecosystem. The story could also be used as a language arts material to help students develop strong vocabulary skills. Please Please the Bees does not feature any multicultural components as it, uh, de as it de deals exclusively with animals. To make the story more inclusive, the author could give the reader a glimpse of the importance of honey throughout various world cultures after Benedict has learned his lesson. The story is contemporary, having been published in 2017, and the novel reflects the modern day issue that is the decline of bees. Please Please the Bees is a story that urges rising generations to care for the bees. And that's all folks. Thanks for watching and have a great day.